Uh, so hi everyone. Uh, today we'll be changing our tracks from generative way and we'll be discussing about a new realm of machine learning that is graph neural networks. So basically, graph neural networks or GNNs have recently become quite popular because of the increasing graph data. So in my previous videos on graph analytics, I've already discussed graph databases Neo4j, where you can implement baseline machine learning algorithms, uh, store your graph data sets and analyze that. Now, in this particular uh, uh, video tutorial series, I'll be talking about deep learning based approach and how you can analyze these graph data set, how you can apply machine learning over these graph data sets for better results. So first of all, GNNs are specialized neural networks designed specially to handle graph problems, right? So you can take GNNs as CNNs. So CNNs are most probably are mostly used for image data sets. Similarly, LSTMs or RNNs are used with uh, text similarly gnn are specializes graph data sets now uh, what types of graph problems gnn can solve i will give you a taste of that node classification so like if you i am assuming that you have baseline idea of what is uh, a graph nodes you know vertices you know if not you can watch my previous video graph analytics for beginners so that would be giving you an idea of what is a graph the baselines of a graph now, node classification, what are different problems that GNNs can solve? I will be uh, pointing a few of them. Node classification would be one, predicting the category of a class of a node in a graph. Like, for example, categorizing online users items based on characteristics like graph generation. Uh, in drug discovery, this becomes a very, very important field where you're trying to generate new graphs. So, like using LLMs, you're generating new text. In graph generation, you're generating new graphs. Right, graph classification. So if you have read in chemistry or like if you are a bio student, you must be remembering molecular diagrams. So all these represents graph. So graph classification is also a very important field where you can differentiate graphs into different, different classes. And it, it's, it has a very major impact in biology, right? The model is trained on labeled graphs with associated attributes, allowing it to categorize new unseen graphs, link prediction, predicting missing links between nodes in a graph. So in my previous videos, I have already explained you how you can uh, like determine missing links in nodes in a graph, but that were using algorithm. This time we are having machine learning models. So I'm assuming them to perform better. Uh, and this can be like, if you have used Facebook or Instagram, you must be getting uh, features like people you may know. So link prediction is basically around that. So in such graphs, you can determine link, whether an edge should exist between node A and B, if it is not present. And there are so many other problems that graph neural networks can handle for you. Now, a big question that you must be coming into your mind is key. Why not to use traditional machine learning algorithms, right? Like logistic regression, SVMs for class, like for node classification, we have, we have graph classification. Why not to use them? Why GNNs are required? So basically in, I will tell you a difference, what advantage GNNs bring in. So in case of a traditional ML model, like logistic regression or talk about SVM or regression, whatever you talk about, the predictions that are made are based on the features of that particular sample x right so if you have features a b c d and you need to determine a binary class 0 or 1 so you would be using the features a b c d and then determining the class if you are using traditional ml now in case of gnns what happens eventually gnns uses the information from graph also right so it is able to aggregate features from the neighboring nodes from the edges from the relationships present in the graph and enhances the feature set that is available with a particular sample so and then it just produces a latent vector representation of the node so in case of traditional ml you're just using the features provided but in case of gnns you're getting uh, you're also adding the information from the graph as a whole uh, from its neighbors from its uh, from the relationship it is in the different relations you get so basically the final representation of a particular feature set that we are Inserting a GNN becomes the actual features of the node that are present and the information derived from other node graphs, other graph components, right? And hence the information provided for that particular sample X is enhanced, right? And hence you would be getting better results. Though you can use traditional ML algorithms, no, uh, no questions around that, but GNNs would be giving you better results. That's what I'm trying to convey. Now, how this secondary information that we're trying to get from the graph is extracted from other components for a given node, right? 
so like for example i will give you a flavor uh, there is a category called as graph convolutional networks gcn which were very similar to cnns only so cnns we are used for images if you remember graph convolutional network so for extracting information from the neighboring nodes or edges or from the graph for a particular node x they apply convolutional operation as we do for images using cnns and multiple iterations of convolution operation so that the information gets accumulated from everything every different components that is present and you get a very rich latent vector of that particular node now this is just to give a flavor i think we won't be deep diving into it right now as i will be covering different uh, gnns i will be talking about this more now moving ahead we will talking about some different types of graph neural networks that are present as i told you graph convolution networks which uses convolutional layers to aggregate and transform neighboring nodes information enabling effective feature learning right so basically it can be taken as a feature engineering operation but in term in the latent space right graph attention network so basically these graph networks uses attention mechanism that is getting used by llms also to weight the importance of neighboring nodes so attention is not limited just to text right so if you go to the mathematics of attention what happens is that it is trying to determine the most important words in the given sentence similarly if you apply attention to graph it would be able to understand which nodes are most important right uh, a graph recurrent neural networks so rnns if you know uh, have some small memory which are uh, at par with lstm so lstm are an upgraded version rnns you are the first one who introduced the concept of memory which now attention to attention has brought it to a new level but rnns was the first ones that bring in the concept of having short memory applying rnn architecture to graph data capturing sequential dependency so basically the different types of graph networks that i'm talking about each of them differ in way how the information is extracted from the neighboring nodes or neighboring edges or the relationships graph auto encoders so basically employing an encoder or decoder structure i'm assuming that you have a baseline idea of what are encoders what are rnns what is attention what is convolution and then you have come to understand graph neural networks so in case of graph auto encoders they employ an encoder decoder structure i think what an auto encoder is all about to get a latent representation of the graph itself right and getting user unsupervised problems graph spatial temporal networks that are helpful in handling spatial and temporal dimensions graph generative networks to generate new graph structures subgraphs etc so there are many other classes also but these are the major ones and these i would be uh, explaining in the future videos now there is one more important section of algorithms called as node vectorization algorithms so if you have worked with nlp so if you know apart from classification generate or like question answering or multi classification model we do have embedding models also right which helps you to generate embeddings for the text because text directly can't be fed to any model similarly in case of graphs also the uh, the node the graph itself can't be fed directly instead what we would be doing we would be converting the nodes and the information present into vectors that i talked about earlier only ki how gcn or you uses convolution to gather information produce a latent uh, vector for a given node so we have separate branch of algorithms also for node vectorization now as mentioned these node vectorization algorithms are usually a pre processing step before applying gnns and hence i would be discussing these also in little detail in my next upcoming videos so a few algorithms before uh, uh, ending this video that you must be knowing about node vectorization are deep walk so deep walk is basically based on random walks that i have this, uh, that I have already discussed in my previous video which uses random walks to generate node sequences and then get uh, node embeddings these are not text embeddings these are node embeddings using what so it can be taken as a combination of random walk plus what to x no need to worry it is just an introduction i will be covering all these algorithms in my coming videos node to walk again extension of deep walk only allowing it to balance between bfs and dfs so i think if you have uh, read about graphs you must have heard of breadth for search and depth for search so it is talking about those algorithms only line and hope so you can uh, read more about these algorithms and i will be telling i will be covering these algorithms in detail uh, in my upcoming video so this is how this was a baseline introduction for gnns for us what are gnns why they are very important why traditional algorithms 
might not be able to produce as good results as GNNs for graph data sets. What are different types of graph neural networks and what are node vectorization algorithms. So it was just a basic introduction, nothing more. Uh, in the upcoming videos, we'll be covering out the different algorithms and we'll be deep diving into the mathematics as well. Thank you.